This is exactly what I would do if I was starting out in real estate and I wanted to buy my first rental property. In the States, there are foreclosure lists and there are tax deed lists, and they're easy to come by. You can find them with a simple Google search for any county USA. And even in the island of Puerto Rico, there's a foreclosure list that you can find fairly easily. All of these lists will provide you the names and addresses of distressed sellers that have problems, they're in trouble, and they need a real estate investor to come and save the day. So I am not suggesting that you go to these places to buy these properties because these are the most difficult places to buy real estate, and they require lots of due diligence, lots of work, and lots of cash, and it's really risky. But these lists, these lists of distressed sellers, they're gold. This is what you want to find, these lists, and then reverse engineer it. Get a phone number or just go knock on the door and get in front of these sellers. The reason that I would probably first look at the tax deed sale, and I only add in the foreclosure sale because the island of Puerto Rico doesn't have a tax deed sale, but I would look at the tax deed sale first because almost every house that's on there is a good deal at the price that it's going to go through. They're about to lose the house to a tax deed sale for their back taxes, which means that 99.9% .9 of the time, those are excellent properties if you can negotiate a deal with the seller. So I'm, again, I'm not suggesting that you go to the sale where you actually have to physically come up with the cash. What I'm suggesting is that you negotiate with these sellers once you've gotten in front of them. You know that they're distressed. You know that they need your help. And so what you're looking for with this list is to find motivated sellers who will, one, sell you houses with seller financing, or two, sell you houses with subject to loans already in place. Once you're in front of these distressed sellers, these motivated sellers, these golden sellers, you're going to negotiate with them to buy their property. I would very quickly express who you are. I am Robbie Krager. I'm a real estate investor. I understand that you're about to lose your house to the tax deed sale and you're in trouble. I would try to sit down and talk with them and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation I would want to listen to their story and hear how they got to where they're at. Maybe they're going through a divorce. Maybe it's an estate sale. Who knows how and why they got into this position. But your job is to get in front of them, have a conversation, and listen to them. Figure out what their needs are so that you can then use that information to negotiate with them and to find a solution to the problem. And their problem is generally speaking, going to be money. They don't have the money to pay the taxes, then they probably don't have the money to pay a mortgage. They probably don't have the money held to eat in some cases. They're in bad trouble when they're on these lists. So the two strategies that I would like to implement, and the reason that I would say to look at the tax deed sale and the foreclosure sale, is there's two different distinct ways that you can find your first rental property, and you don't need to have your own money or any of that stuff that we talked about earlier. You can do this as a broke dick. With the tax deed sale, most of these properties are not going to have significant other debt. If the banks do have a big mortgage, they generally pay the taxes, so they don't end up on the tax deed sale. They end up on the foreclosure list. We're going to go through both of these. One is seller financing. That's what I would do if I'm looking at the tax deed sale. And so you know what the taxes are that they don't have, that they're going to lose their property for. And first, when I got the list of the people that I'm going to go see, I would rather see them in person if I can, but I would also reverse engineer it and get them on the phone if I need to. So I always think that it's better for you to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation in person to the extent that you can do it. If you can't, then you need to do it by phone. So tax deeds, we're looking for seller finance deals. We're looking for people who can't afford to pay their taxes. They're probably not doing the upkeep on the house. The things that I'd want to have in my pocket as I'm going to meet with the people before I sit down with them, I would already have done the research and determined what does a property in their neighborhood that's of similar size and type go for in its highest and best state. So in other words, fixed up. And we have other content on that, guys, if you want to figure out how to do comps and things like that. And you can use Zillow for most of this stuff. So I would go there with that and I would offer them to pay their taxes and to get them out of this problem that they're in and give them some money so that they can move on. And then I would probably try to set it up so that I have a seller finance deal so that I can fix the property up, put a renter in there and make a spread on the cash flow. And this is a great deal for the person who's about to lose their property to some taxes. So you'd be surprised how receptive some people will be. Now, I want to warn you, 
if you're going to go this route and you're going to call people up who aren't paying their taxes, you'd better be ready for rejection. So we have had just personal stories where we show up and we start talking to people about how we can help them with their taxes and people have yelled at us, screamed at us, cursed us out. I mean, it's as if we're the people who didn't pay the taxes and we're the government that's going to crush them and take their house from them and throw them out on the street. You're going to get rejected. That is the truth of the matter. And that's going to happen whether you're talking to the tax deed or you're talking to the guy who's in foreclosure. Whoever they're talking to, that's who they're going to blame. Just be ready for it. Let me give you an example of what it would look like to negotiate a tax deed potential property into a seller finance deal. And guys, I'm going to make some assumptions that the house is fairly clean because that's what we're going to be looking for. You don't have a lot of money and you don't have a lot of money to put into repairs. So I want to get you into a long-term rental deal with as little money as possible. So in our example here, $15,000 is owed in taxes and you negotiate with the seller, their house is worth $250,000 on its very best day. And you guys, you think you can rent it out at $2,000 a month. And so you want to structure a price with the seller that gives you some equity to start and gives him enough money that the taxes get paid and he gets a few thousand dollars to move out and then you're going to start paying him monthly on the house. So what we would try and do is negotiate this seller finance portion of the deal where you're going to structure it over maybe a 15-year amortization. If you offer him 0% interest and you get this accepted, that's going to be phenomenal. Your monthly payment would then be on that $180,000, $1,000 a month for the next 15 years, and you would put a renter in there that would cover your $1,000 a month and make you a thousand dollars a month. Now I use this example because when I get to the real life example on the foreclosure sale, you're going to see that it very much lines up with what I did really just last month in Altamont Springs, Florida. So that's how I would go through the tax deed list, negotiate with sellers, get them some money to pay the taxes and some cash to move on and start giving them some cash flow every month. The ones that are willing to sell to you are going to be excited to listen to you because they're out of options and you're talking to them at a point in time when they're about to lose everything. If they lose the house to taxes, they get nothing. The sheriff shows up and throws them out. So keep that in mind. Why would somebody want to take your deal? Why would somebody want to do this seller finance deal with you? It's because it's way better than what's about to happen. It's way better than the alternative. And they've put themselves in a bad position. They're in trouble and you're coming in with solutions and you deserve to get paid for those solutions. So now let's flip it over to the other side, the other list that you can go to that's very easy for you to find. And that's the foreclosure list. And you can find these foreclosure lists in every county in USA. You can find them in every town in the island of Puerto Rico. They're readily available. They're easy to find. They give you the same kind of information. It's a little bit different, the structure, and we'll get into that. But you're going to be able to know who's losing the property, what the property address is. You're going to know how approximately how much money they owe. Maybe you can even glean pretty easily how long they've been in foreclosure, so how much money needs to be paid to bring it current. I want to talk about now a deal that I just did where we bought a property out of foreclosure. It was an estate, so the people had died. Both the husband and wife had died. The house then goes into foreclosure because nobody's paying for it. So we bought this house in Altamont Springs, Florida. It was a probate house. It was in foreclosure, and we had to actually take it through probate. So the lady had inherited the house, but she wasn't making payments on it, and that's why it was in foreclosure. She had no idea how to sell it. She couldn't actually sell it because in Florida, you have to take it through probate. Inheritance in Puerto Rico is even harder than that. So you're solving a problem again. And when you're solving problems, you deserve to get paid. So we helped the heirs to take the house through probate and get the right to sell it. And we did all of this very fast. We did it on our dime with a contract in hand. And then what happened was once we took it through probate, we brought the loan current, we brought it out of foreclosure, and we assumed the subject to part, we assumed the loan that was there in place from the dead guy. So it was $180,000 roughly that we assumed, and it was a great loan. They had taken it out about four and a half, five years ago. So the rate was like 4%. And we put $20,000 to bring it current with the bank. And then we gave $20,000 to the heirs. And we took over a property that we now owe $180,000 to the bank. We've set it up on automatic payment. And guys, we rented the house out for $1,900 a month. And we pay $900 a month all in on that 
glorious loan that we were able to assume that we bought subject to. So that's PI and TI. That's principal and interest and taxes and insurance. Our all-in payments, 900 bucks a month. That's a dream. And we rented it out for $1,900 a month. So we're making roughly $1,000 a month with some upkeep and things like that. We don't quite net that, but that's what we're looking at guys this house was beautiful it didn't really need anything it had a house full of stuff a lifetime of things these people got old and their golf clubs are there and it was a little bit of a mess but it was easy to clean up it was easy to find a tenant now we've got cash flow the house has some equity i'd say right now we're all in for around 220 230 thousand dollars with the clean out and everything the property's probably worth 280 or 290 it's cash flowing really really well for us over time that loan will get paid off by the tenant, which is a beautiful thing, and our equity will continue to grow. So this is one of the best ways, this is one of the most exciting ways that I see right now is buying houses subject to, bringing loans current, buying houses subject to, and keeping them as rentals for a long period of time.